The preacher's task has been described as comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable. <laughs> Not that I'm about to pick on you folks over here, I'm sorry. Comforting the afflicted, declaring God's good news, God's grace, the promise of God's mercy, that because God is who God is, because God has done, is doing, and will do what God has done, is doing, and will do, then we are great beneficiaries of God's grace and mercy. We are comforted in our affliction. And now for you folks. We hear God's expectation that if we stray too far from the path that God has set out before us, revealed not only in God's word, but in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, if we stray too far, there will be consequences. And in our comfort, we are afflicted to realize that we got to straighten up and we have to throw ourselves at the feet of the cross, asking for mercy yet again. The preacher's task is to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. Woe to us, church, woe to us if we confuse the preacher's task. If we start to get into the business of comforting the comfortable, then we slide into something that our brother Dietrich Bonhoeffer called cheap grace. Cheap grace tastes so good, but that life of mercy without repentance is like saccharin. It's empty of all spiritual nutrition. But every once in a while, church also falls into the other sin, not so much comforting the comfortable, but afflicting the afflicted. Ah, oh, how sad that a faith born by the one who wears the cross for the whole human family would gain a reputation for being a people that love to afflict the afflicted. Shame on us. We are called to something better. It is in my estimation, an easy thing to do, to look at the very beginning of this morning's gospel passage and use it to afflict the afflicted. I myself have had this passage used to afflict me, not in my comfort, but in my insecurity of spirit. My reasoning went a little bit like this, and this is what being a Gen X kid who grew up on Star Wars can do to your theology. When, uh, let's see, Diane is here. Uh, when my family walked into Mount Zion Lutheran Church uh, for the very first time for worship, and must have been 1981, uh, there in front was the glorious Pastor John Clausen. He looked glorious to me. Uh, he had this great beard, and he wore these robes and had his stole on and sort of floated through the liturgy like a creature from uh, another level of creation. To my young eyes, walking into that great room on that Sunday morning, Pastor John looked an awful lot like a Jedi Knight. He looked like <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi to me. And so something happened on my insides at that very, very early stage of my faith formation. Uh, something happened that made me think that somehow Christianity was like the force. That if you just had enough faith, you could do wild and weird and amazing things. And if you were not able to do those wild, weird, and amazing things, then might that mean that there isn't even a mustard seed worth of faith on your insides? Preachers are weird. 
Uh, generally, it is your own spiritual malady that will draw you into the life of the clergy. And that spiritual insecurity ate away at my insides for years. Maybe I don't have enough faith. Maybe my congregations aren't growing because I just don't have enough faith. Maybe my knees are starting to ache in middle age because I don't have enough faith to hold that pain at bay. See how that affliction can get you when you are already afflicted and leave you in a place of bewilderment. Here's what I have come to understand. And I was reminded of it when I was watching a recent Star Wars series. Somebody says to Obi-Wan Kenobi, one of my heroes, why don't you just use the force and do something to fix this? And Obi-Wan says, it doesn't work that way. And I am here to tell you that sometimes Christianity doesn't work that way. And it's only after years of coming into the friendship of the Lord Jesus, the risen one, that you start to realize something about Jesus. Our Lord loves hyperbole. You know what a hyperbole is? Uh, when when you, you, uh, you just totally go off the deep end, you, you blow things way out of proportion. Jesus loves to do that. Uh, Not because he's trying to gnaw away at our spiritual insecurity. He does that because he's trying to get a point across. If you are sick, if you are struggling with addiction, if someone you love is sick or is struggling in some way, and you have prayed and you have prayed and you have prayed seemingly to no avail, then let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with your faith. That is not what Jesus is trying to do in this morning's gospel. He's trying to do the exact opposite. He's trying to tell you, you don't have to become some spiritual superhero. You don't have to become uh, some great character out of some romantic fantasy. Instead, you can be your dang self, just as you are beloved wildly by a God who is willing to die in your place filled with that God's spirit, created in that God's image, and whatever little bit of faith you might have right now, as insignificant as it may seem to you, it is enough. It is enough. You are enough. Enough for one who loves you wildly. Enough for one who will show you the way forward. And sometimes that way still goes through the valley of the shadow of death. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you or your faith. Whatever little bit you've got, throw up your hands and say a great hallelujah. And when those of us come together with those little mustard seeds of faith, We have seen over the 2,000 years of Christ's movement that wildly beautiful things happen. We look around us today and we think that we are on the verge of civilization's collapse, but if our ancestors, our spiritual ancestors, our genetic ancestors, got to see the life that we live today, they would think that we were in the waiting room of eternity. We have it so good. And so much of that is because our spiritual ancestors, little mustard seeds, added up together and across the ages to do glorious things. Christianity is not like the force. Jesus is not Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's trying to inspire you, and he's pulling out all the stops. And today he's telling us that little bit of faith you've got left, it can grow into something really beautiful. Amen. Please rise.